Morning, everybody. Or actually, I suppose it's afternoon. I uh, hope everybody's keeping well. Um, obviously, it's a very difficult time at the moment, and thoughts with everybody, particularly NHS and other health workers. Um, but I suppose one of the things we can't do is uh, is type lies. Um, and so what I want to do is do a few of these live streams. We'll try this one uh, to start with. Hopefully, that will get into focus. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a go at this today, and... Uh, Hopefully, see how it goes, and if, it's, if it goes well, we'll be a few more. And um, so, the pattern, as you may have seen on on uh, on Facebook on time today, is a fucking uh, copper shrimp. Um, it's a pattern that Sean McLaughlin uh, has come up with. Sean does a lot of work uh, in the northwest, particularly in the the Fawton River there. And this is a pattern that he came up with, uh, I think, two or three years ago now. Uh, but it's done very well. Obviously in, in Ireland, but also Scotland, and I think even uh, a certain Mr. Armstrong's got a few fish in, uh, in Russia. So it's a very good, good it travels very well. But as you can hopefully see here, uh, it follows it's a traditional Irish shrimp fly type pattern, um, which is really, yeah, it's quite distinctive. So you've got a, a golden pheasant tail, uh, and you've got a middle hackle, in this case it's orange, and you've got a, a front hackle, which again in this case is an orange badger. It's a whiting, um, but a really nice pattern, and as um, I say, very been very very effective. So yeah, we we'll shall get time, and if people uh, yeah want to have comments, uh, questions, uh, far away, and I'll do my best to hopefully hopefully answer those. So yeah, we'll we'll get started. Um, the hooks is going to be tied on today. Um, our loop um, dynamic doubles, which are very good, um, very nice profile hook, and very strong. So uh, I'll just put this into the into the vise and uh, we'll get started. So one of the things sometimes people ask me um, about hooks and uh, particularly in terms of proportions and tying of flies uh, is where you should actually tie on the on the hook. Um, and generally, what I always say is, yeah, you want to be at the back. Then what will actually happen is then your materials will actually start to angle down. So. A useful sort of pointer I always, I always find is if you actually go back to where the hook point is here, that's actually that is the same line as the level part of the hook. And as I say, if you go back any further back, then the materials will start to angle down. The other thing just to note um, with these loop hooks is they're very good, strong, uh, and a nice profile, but they do have the down eye. So it's the same with any down eye hook. Uh, it, the materials and the thread particularly have a tendency to slip down over the eye of the hook. So you just need to be a little bit more disciplined. So whenever you're tying uh, on these types of hooks, I would normally sort of aim to stop tying up right there. And it just gives a wee bit of uh, margin for error. So that's basically it. So we'll get started. Um, the thread I'm going to be using today is UTC70, uh, which is a nice uh, thread. I've used that for most of my fly tying. And the 70 is a good sort of... Um, general sort of size. You can get thicker, but I think for most uh, salmon flies, that's a good thickness and doesn't create too much bulk, which is what you want. So whenever I'm tying in, I normally would start at the middle of the, of the hook. That's where I'm going to be tying in the uh, middle hackle. So it's just a good, a good sort of starting point. And I'm just going to do a few wraps there, and then I'm going to get my tag material, which in this case should be copper uh, Cover over with tinsel, but I don't actually have any left. And it's hard to just get at the moment. So I'm just going to use some mobile gold, which is quite close to it. And generally what I do is I tie underneath the hook, introduce the, the tinsel, and just line that up with where you had started. And just work your way down beyond the hook points. And about there, nice sort of touch and turns. And then come up, as I say, level those hook points because that's your your starting point and then just wind that on nice touch and turns until you reach that hook reference point that's a bit and then just tie that off underneath the hook and then just bring that under the hook to keep it nice and tidy and that just keeps it nice level but I can flatten that down with here with the needle as well 
So that's essentially our tag tied in. Um, we'll go back down to the bottom of that. And the next thing we'll be tying in is some um, flash. Uh, I'm known for my flash. And I do like some bling, obviously not too much, but uh, I think some well-proportioned uh, bling can be very good. This is a uh, micro crystal hair. And this is as per the pattern, so this is a gold uh, micro crystal. Just take one strand of that. And then what I normally do, just get that. What I normally do is I line up the, hopefully you can see that, line up those tips like that, turns, and then just do a few more just to wrap it up a little bit, and then just fold back on each other like that, and then just lock that in. And then just cut that roughly to about the size of the, of the, uh, of the tail. And that's essentially, you've got your, your flash tied in. Um, one of the things you might notice there, I don't, I had a different lengths and that's uh, helps, that means in, when it's in the water, um, it doesn't all congeal together into one sort of solid uh, bit of flash. It actually creates different lengths, a bit of a sort of a taper. So hopefully you can see that, uh, see that there. So the next thing we're we'll gonna be tying in, and I suppose this is one of the, the distinct things of this pattern, is a golden pheasant, uh, but this one's dyed purple. Uh, and this one, I suppose, one of the things that is quite distinct about this particular fly. Uh, purple's a bit of an unusual color. Um, quite often you would see maybe claret uh, being used, uh, particularly for sort of back ends, so claret tail. Band specialists can be very effective from sort of mid-season onwards. Um, but this one's dyed purple, I don't think I've actually seen any other pattern. So that was one that Sean has used. Um, and I think this was got from Vineyards, uh, dyed purple. I know people like Steve Cooper, I know always has uh, good, good materials. So that's how the fella comes. But again, some of the questions I get asked is, how long should you actually tie the, uh, the, the fella? How long should it be? And I suppose generally my rule of thumb would be that it would be uh, at least one to one and a half lengths uh, uh, than the body. And if you look at that, hopefully you can sort of see that there. That's maybe just a little bit a little bit short. So um, that one will be a bit, maybe for a smaller, a smaller hook. But I've got one here that I prepared earlier. And hopefully as you can see, I've taken all the, the uh, excess rough sort of uh, soft material that you don't really need, you don't really want to be tying in, I remove that. And then I've, I've exposed the, uh, the tip here. So what I want to be doing now, and you can see hopefully uh, that there is more the length, the right length of the body. So it comes down to that. So that's the right, a good sized fella for the uh, this particular fly. Um, tannin golden pheasant can be a wee bit awkward. Um, lots of people have different methods, but generally I would just tie it in at the side by the tip and just wrap it down. And then, like you would do with any other pattern, I generally uh, double it, or any other feather, double it. So just stroke it back with your fingers. Uh, like that. And I'm just going to remove that bit there. Um, with golden pheasant, I normally just like to actually use my fingers rather than uh, hackle pliers. So again, gently, and just wrapping it round, use that finger there. And I said, it can be a little bit fruitery. So I just use a double needle just to stretch some of those out. And wrap it around, keep going. And just keep going. Oh, we're stroking those feathers back. Sometimes don't like to play ball. Just keep going until you get that tied off. Let's wrap around. And it does look a bit messy at the moment, actually. 
and go there. And sometimes it'll be a bit easier to actually take it off the uh, take it off the vice. Just do a, a half hitch to secure, secure that tang thread in, and then just lift it out of the vice, and then just with your double needle, take out those there. It's a wee bit a wee bit easier with uh, doubles as opposed to uh, treble. Trebles definitely the hook, hook points uh, really do catch. But once you get most of those out, and just stroke that back, and you can see that's that's forming the much nicer, neater, neater fly. But that's essentially it. Um, but what I'm going to do now, sometimes we get a rogue, just like that. Um, but what I'm going to do now is, uh, this is actually a size 12 hook. Um, so I'm going to change this to one that I've done earlier, which is on a size 8, which is a wee bit easier to um, to see. I think sometimes the size 12 can be a bit difficult to uh, to watch when you're, um, or to follow. So size 8, just a wee bit bigger, just a bit easier. But essentially that's, that's the time of the tail. The other reason why I want to show you this one is, um, uh, this has got a slightly different um, material bling in the tail. Um, this one's got some angel angel hair. So hopefully you can see, yeah, that's a bigger hook, so you can see a bit easier what's going on. Um, but that's got angel hair, uh, which is again this nice copper uh, angel hair, which just gives me a bit more mobility um, in, the, in the tail. So I'll just rejoin this on. Um, I'm just realizing this is what happens when you're live streaming. I've actually already tied the body for that one. So what we'll do is we'll not do this one. <laughs> we'll go back because I want to show you how to tie in the, the braid body. I thought I had just tied the, uh, the, the tail of that one. So we'll go back to our exhibit one and I'll try that one again. So yes, so we'll just tie that, reattach the thread. It's always the fun of uh, live streams. Right, so um, the uh, ribbon this fly is copper. And so I've just got, basically got some copper wire here. So I'm just gonna cut that. The other point just to, with copper wire or any of these sort of materials, they are a wee bit, um, uh, a wee bit harder to cut and they can damage your scissors. So generally, I, <laughs> I like scissors. These are my general pair. Then uh, I also have a, a pair for sort of fine work. Um, and I also have a pair then for sort of heavier duty. Uh, and so I use these for cutting wire. And it just means that uh, if you dull the, the blade of these, it doesn't really matter as much. So again, what I normally do is just go under the fly of the hook and just uh, catch that in and go down to the, to the base and just use your thumb just to create a wee bit of an angle and it depends some people have uh, material uh, grips on the vice some people don't uh, but i use that's quite a handy just keeps that material out of the way so right then we're ready to uh, tie in our rear body and for this fly, uh, for this particular fly, I'm going to be using some braid. Uh, I suppose this is really where it gets its name, the copper, uh, bottom copper shrimp. This is a, a nice flat braid from uh, Lip, and it's uh, Lokinka. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that for all our, our Swedish uh, friends. Uh, but very nice braid, it gives a, it's quite a durable, um, a durable material. Um, it's one of the things if you use a tinsel body, uh, once you, you hopefully hook up a fish or two, it can uh, become a wee bit more uh, fragile. So that's why if you use something like braid, uh, you can just make it a bit more robust, robust fly. 
Uh, so essentially what I've done is got the braid, and hopefully maybe you can see that. I've actually cut that at a slight angle, which makes it a bit neater to tie in. Um, so I can just tie that in. And just wind then down to your middle point of your, of your hackle. And then just bring this round. And I normally like just to tie that, bring that round so it's nice. Make sure you get a good secure tying in. And then just nice touching turns up to the uh, to the middle point. You fly it turn on there. And then just a few reps to tie that off. And just cut it off. And just use your nail to make sure that's nice and level. It should be, and then just bring your rib. Just need to check the yeah, the standby time on that. But hopefully you can see that. That's I need to focus again. And uh, so yeah, just use then the copper rib. Probably generally about three turns. That's two and then three. And just tie that off. And you can just use your nail with wire, you can just use your nail, just twist that, and that will just come off quite easily. So that's essentially that. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of wax on the thread now, so we're ready for our middle hackle. So, uh, as I say, the middle hackle on this particular fly is... Um, is orange, uh, this orange cock hackle. And uh, hopefully, I don't know if you can see that, that's a, this is a flat wing, waiting flat wing hackle, nice bright uh, orange. So what I want to be doing is just selecting a, a hackle. And what I'd like to do just to, once I've selected a rough hackle, and then measure it against the fly. Um, again, there's different schools of thought in terms of whenever you're tying a, uh, a shrimp fry or a shrimp fly. The original, the original style was that you would have a, a shorter middle hackle, and then you would have a longer front hackle. Uh, but I think it was Robert Gillespie came up with the style of actually tying uh, the middle hackle being longer, and that's the style that I like. I just think it allows each of the, the three hackles to move independently. So that's what I like to do. So I'm just measuring that up. And so essentially what I want is that hackle to be coming, sort of merging a little bit into the tail, but not too much. Um, so I've got the hackle here like this. Stroke it back, and again, like it over the golden pheasant, to just strip off, uh, you can see that, strip off that surface. Uh, and that's you. And then what I normally do is to make it a little bit easier to tie in, uh, I just cut the edges of this bit at the top. It just helps to anchor it in when you're tying. Hopefully maybe you can see that. Maybe a bit hard to see. Uh, but that was the other reason why I've also waxed the thread, just so that the hackle doesn't, uh, doesn't slip. This be here for a little bit. And then we'll tie it in. So that's it tied in now. And then generally what I do is also then just use a, a pair of scissors, the, the back of a pair of scissors, just to stroke those hackle fibers back. And that helps to introduce a backward angle. And that then allows you to double the hackle. Come out with my finer uh, scissors just for the fine piece of work. Sharp that off. Um, and I've got my hacker pliers, lots of different hacker pliers. These are CNF. Um, yeah, I've had them for quite a number of years. Great, uh, great pair of hacker pliers. And then just use your fingers, stroke those back. And then every time you do a turn, just stroke them back. That just gives you a nice, neat 
Just keep going until you've you're happy with the uh, with the density of your hackle. Uh, I don't like it too too dense, but this is a fairly uh, fine hackle. So that's it. I'm happy with that in terms of the number of turns. So I normally just strip off because I like to tie in on a bare hackle uh, stock. Just tie that back like that. A couple of turns just to lock it in like that. Uh, sometimes with that. And then I know I just like to stroke those fibers back. So it gives a nice neat appearance. So you can see here. That's a lot of our, our fly already tied down. So in terms of proportions, we've got the body, then roughly two thirds is where we tied in that middle hackle. And then we've got our front hackle. Um, so yeah, size 12, you don't have a huge amount of room. That's why I was going to say tie the uh, <laughs> the size eight. But as I say, uh, that didn't, didn't quite work, but that's that. So then what we want to do is tie in our rib. Again, we're going to use some wire rib. So we'll just tie it in underneath the hook. And then we're ready to dub. And with dubbing, uh, stuff I'm going to use is fairly easy to dub, but I always put a wee bit of wax just on it, just to... Uh, Kinga, as in hopefully I got the pronunciation right. Again, this is a lip product, a very nice, uh, a nice dubbing. And as you can see here, it's, it's actually made up of different, uh, a range of different materials. Um, and it just gives a really nice blend of, of sparkle and also movement. So you don't need a huge amount of that, so just take a, a sort of small pinch. Um, now what we're gonna do is just create a dubbing rope. Just put it onto the, onto the thread and always in the opposite direction. Now this is probably going to be more than we need, but we can always take that off. So just tie that in. Oh, he's actually cooperating. A rogue, uh, a rogue hack of fiber. So what I also like to do is just go down a little bit on those um, uh, the hack of middle hack of, just to bring that down a little bit. And as I say, you don't really need too much of it. That's going to be enough. Just take that off. Use an or tweezers. Just to take some of that off. So you want a wee bit of mobility, but not too not too much. And then just give them that rib. And just use your nail to break that off. So that's us nearly finished the fly. And what I'm going to do now is the final hack up. But one of the interesting things is uh, with this fly, there's no jungle cock. Uh, there's quite a debate about jungle cock and use of jungle cock. Does it improve flies? Does it not? Um, uh, he has debates uh, both ways. I've, had, I've caught lots of fish with uh, flies with jungle cock, I also got lots of flies without. So it just depends, uh, I suppose it comes down to confidence at the end of the day. Uh, do you have confidence in a particular 
Um, do you think it's going to add more to your to your fly? Uh, Sean's decided not to go with double cock, and also says it's been a very successful fly. Um, so yeah, it's up to you. It's entirely up to your up to yourself. Um, but what we're going to do now, the final part is is really just a uh, the front hackle, which is a badger dyed uh, orange. Uh, there's a nice, uh, these are nice whiting uh, genetic badger capes. Really nice to work with. Uh, very good quality. As I say, this was just been dyed, uh, dyed orange. So what we want to do is to get a hackle again, just measure it out. Um, just see, that's just about right. So again, same process. Stroke those back. Take out the the excess hackle. Let's drink that back. Cut off the point. I'll just make sure we have enough wax here. Help secure that in. So we just be tying that in. And side again. And a few turns just to tie it, secure it in. Now with the back of your scissors, again, just stroke that back. Double this thing. Okay, we'll cut that off and then get our high pliers. And same process as the middle one, so just stroking these high fibers back. Oh, it's not very. Not exactly what we wanted to do, but that's okay. We'll just rescue this at the end, just tie it like that. Same as the middle half, I'll just nice turns one top of each other. And every time just stroke those back. And that's enough turns. Just gonna strip it right off. Goes back. And I'm just cut off your tag. So that's essentially the uh, the fly finished. Uh, the foam copper shrimp. I gave myself a bit of uh, work to do with the uh, at the head of the flight, just because uh, uh, the doubling was a wee bit thicker than probably I wanted. But basically, just do a, a half inch to finish it off. Um, and then just a bit of put a glue and that's you so yeah it's a it's a nice pattern it works very well um, all across the world I suppose um, and 
Yeah, certainly something maybe to tie up, something a bit different, a bit new to tie up for your for your box this year. Um, and that's essentially it. So hopefully that has been has been useful. You've enjoyed that. Um, and a few glitches to uh, to work through. Um, but uh, yes, I think I need to work on the, uh, the standby. It keeps on going to standby the uh, the camera. But we'll get that sorted. And hopefully, you find that useful and helpful. And if you have any questions or queries, yeah, just let me know, and I shall try my best to answer them. Otherwise, yeah, everybody keep safe and uh, hopefully subscribe, and uh, we'll do another one. All right, speak to you soon.